You are listening to the Real Faith Stories podcast, interviews with people who chose to boldly follow their faith. I'm your host, Brian Robinson. Now, let's meet our guest and hear their story. Mark, welcome to Real Faith Stories. It's really good to have you on the podcast today. Thank you, Brian. My privilege to be here. I asked in what specific ways your life has changed and what kind of impact has your story made. And you said, in this process, I've learned some things that changed my life in very powerful ways. I learned to trust God and commit to Him at a deeper level. I also learned the lifestyle of being led by the Holy Spirit rather than by my good deeds. As I practiced these things, I began to see God show up in my personal healing, my marriage with my children, and business in ways that amazed me. And yes, based on our previous conversation, they're amazing. So Mark, please share about your backstory and let's kind of dive in. I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana, and when I was very young, I experienced childhood trauma. And my parents weren't bad people. They weren't abusive, but I just felt very alone growing up. And that led to an anxiety disorder and insomnia. So I had a lot of fears and insecurities because of growing up like that. And I cope, I coped with them by trying to, to be good enough, you know, always wanting to perform to kind of prove to myself that I was okay. And that was my way of trying to feel in control when my life felt very out of control. Yeah. And I grew up in the Catholic Church, which just reinforced this performance mindset. I literally felt like I'm only as good and as valuable as my last accomplishment. And that was very void of grace. And this anxiety that I had, it wasn't an occasional, I'm feeling anxious today. It was an anxiety disorder. It was chronic anxiety and insomnia that I suffered with for decades. And it was pretty torturous. I, I never seriously considered suicide, but most days I was in so much pain that I, I didn't want to live. And I, I really had no hope that my pain was ever going to end. How old were you when this started to manifest? Five, six, seven. And um, really, my life was about coping with an overwhelming amount of fear and insecurity. And I'm going to fast forward to after I got through high school. I decided I didn't have a lot of guidance on what degree should I get, what what type of work should I do. And so I knew I liked math and I decided to become an engineer. I actually got two engineering degrees, but still that was really performance based. It was like, okay, what type of engineering can I do that'll make the most money? And so I became a petroleum engineer. And my whole thought was if I can do well and I can make a lot of money and on and on, I could feel good about myself. But that never worked because what I needed was the love and the connection that I missed growing up. And when I was in my early 20s in college, I began to seek truth and especially the truth about who God was. And as I look back, the Holy Spirit was just like making deposits, like (laughs) giving me some breadcrumbs to follow. Mm -hmm. And when I was 25 years old, as I was searching, I thought there's got to be more to God than all these rules and regulations and what I had learned about God. So I searched for a Bible in my home. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. We didn't have a Bible that we read regularly, but I'm like, maybe there's one up in the attic or something I can go find. (laughs) And I got the Bible and I thought, man, my name's Mark. I'm going to read the gospel of Mark. I love it. And when I did that, I believed I accepted Christ. Mm. It was a pretty amazing that the Holy Spirit led me to, to just do that on my own. And so I came to Christ. I was really blessed that I got into solid Bible teaching churches. I began to grow, but I still carried this rigid performance mindset into my walk with God. You know, I was a very disciplined person about reading my Bible consistently, going to church, going to small group and so on and so forth. So it was still, I was still really having more of a a works mentality and even, you know, can I be good enough for God kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. But when I came to Christ, uh, one thing that the Lord really put on my heart was the importance of understanding my calling, that he had made me for a purpose. 
And it was really important that I discover that purpose. And in Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So by now, I was working in the oil industry, which I worked in for many, many years, and trying to really rationalize living out my calling, but then knowing I really wasn't in the right place for that. How did you know that, Mark? What was kind of going on internally that was nudging you to think that? I think the biggest thing was that God gave me a gift to work with people, to serve and help people. And I was really in this technical industry where I did supervise some people for a while. And I thought, well, maybe that's going to kind of meet this need to serve people. But that's that was not what God had you know, in mind for me. So in 2012, God began to close some doors. I began to have some struggles in my current job that made me really reevaluate my calling. And, and keep in mind, I was in my late 40s by now. So I wasn't like I was 25 years old. As I was seeking the Lord, a great resource that he provided me was a book called The Shape Book. And it was a great book to to work through a process to give me clues to how God had made me and what he had really called me to. And as Christians, we all have the same general calling to, to make disciples, to evangelize and disciple people. But what I'm talking about here is what did God plan for me, given the way he designed me and my gifts and my abilities and so forth? I was really searching for that. As I went through that process with the shape book, I felt that God was leading me to be a financial planner because I felt like that would allow me to really develop relationships with people and serve people. And that was a gift of mine. And I wanted to be a good steward of my technical abilities, which I had developed as an engineer. And there's a lot of that that's involved in investment management and things like that, too. So I really became convinced this is what the Lord is calling me to. So I left the corporate world and it was, I guess you could say, my fear of missing my calling and all that God had planned for my life was greater than the fear of making such a big, scary career change. Wow. Because I left the corporate world. I made a big salary. I had every great benefit you could imagine. And I left all that go to, to start over, to pursue God's calling for me and to be obedient to Christ to the best of my ability. So let me pause there, Mark. Clearly, this process was not all alone. You've got your wife, children. So what was your wife's response to you making this career change? Yeah, that's a great question. At the time, I had just met my wife and she was going through a career change. My wife was miraculous. <laughs> <laughs> she was an amazing encourager. You can imagine me making this crazy career change when I'm struggling with this anxiety disorder and my insecurities and fears. And so there were plenty of days when I was like, what am I doing? Is this crazy? And whenever I would doubt and struggle, she would say, I know God called you to this. I know that you are gifted for this and you're going to do great. <laughs> I love that. What a blessing. Oh, she was amazing. Wow. Just amazing. I'll, I'll always be so grateful for how she helped me through that time. So good. So I literally said, Lord, I'm going to make this change. I'm surrendering to you and I'm jumping off my faith cliff. Mm. And if you don't catch me, I'm going to splat. And so God pretty quickly provided a miraculous way for me to just get started in the industry. So there's an organization called Kingdom Advisors that is an organization to equip Christian advisors and financial principles and so forth and to be able to lead their clients in biblical principles. I was looking in the phone book. I looked at that directory and I identified the person who was a Kingdom Advisor who was just, his office was closest to where I lived. I went and knocked on his door and I said, hey, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. This is what God's put on my heart. And he ended up helping me to get into the business. Now, this is amazing because whenever you work with another advisor and you're just getting started, 
or, or not necessarily just getting started, but in order for them to take you on, they want to know well, what's your book of business? What do you bring to me that I can profit from if I'm going to help you? And I had nothing to offer him. You backed up this giant trailer of nothing. Yeah, I backed up this giant trailer of nothing. And it and his name is Marty. And Marty was so generous. I was very blessed in working with him because Marty's really skilled and really good at what he does. And so he taught me the industry. He helped me to get started with a broker dealer, which is a necessary part of getting started. And I asked him later on, like, Marty, what caused you to do that for me when I had nothing to offer you? And he said, the Lord put it on my heart to do that for you. Shout out to Marty. Wow. (laughs) Yes. And so I learned the industry and I got started, but I really struggled it's really low odds to make it in this industry. It was difficult to get clients and uh, build my business. And I made very little money for several years, like six years. What is your wife saying during that time? She was so consistent. And yeah, I thought about that and I thought, wow, you know, what woman is going to be excited about me leaving a job where I made a lot of money and had all this stuff? quote, stability and perks to start over, just completely start over and then struggle for years. Mm. But I know God, God just used her to encourage me in a great way. But as much as I struggled, God provided financially for me to keep going. And I never seriously considered quitting. I just knew in my heart this was God's will. In some way, somehow he was going to work it out. So I just kept going. During that dry season of just keeping on, keeping on. What was one of your biggest takeaways and learnings? I I believe God was just teaching me that he's faithful, that he was teaching me to trust him. And the other really big miracle that happened was he provided another person that was really, really significant. And his name is Lee Ray, and he leads a ministry called Jesus Christ CEOs. And it is about equipping the saints and encouraging business owners to dedicate and operate their companies for the glory of God. And I got to know Lee Ray, and he discipled me. I would talk to him every week, and he had gone through some very dry years. I mean, amazingly difficult years. And so he was the perfect person to say, Mark, I just really sense God is in this for you. Just keep going. Just keep going. Lee Ray is a mighty man of God, and he really has this great connection with the Lord. And he modeled for me how to really walk with the Lord. Again, I when I became a Christian, I was still, for years and years, I was still operating with this kind of works-based, can I be good enough for God mentality. And thank God the Lord was patient with me. <laughs> and so he began to model like, how to have this intimate relationship with Christ and to have this daily communication with the Holy Spirit that I began to just grow in my trust in God. I began to be led by the Holy Spirit each day. And when I say be led by the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about anything that's like over the top or super charismatic or anything like that. It's a, a very practical way of walking with the Lord where every morning I remind myself that my life is no longer mine. It's Christ. And I ask the Holy Spirit, show me your will for this day. Help me to listen and then give me the power to carry it out. And I don't hear perfectly, but I, I sense how he's leading me. And so As I began to grow in this freedom in my walk with the Lord, I also began growing in my commitment to Christ. And part of going through the Jesus Christ CEO curriculum, part of that was to make a covenant with the Lord and also to consecrate my business to Christ. So it's pretty short. I want to read this to you. This is my covenant. I made this on September 20th, 2017. It says, Lord, this day I make a covenant with you that my business is your business and that my life is your life. I commit to live as an authentic disciple, seeking your spirit continually and obeying the direction the spirit gives me, since it is no longer I who live, but Christ who now lives in me. My life is yours, O Lord, to use as you will to manifest your kingdom on earth as Christ, executive officer of this business that you have entrusted me to steward. 
And so that was the the way I committed my life, my business to Christ. And really, Christ is the CEO of the business. I'm just I'm just a steward to, to follow his leading. You know, a lot of people say that, but there's meat on the bones here. I mean, you made a commitment, and this was no small thing. This wasn't just something you said. This is something you deeply believed, wasn't it? It was. It, it became a very deep conviction. And so I began to really surrender my life to Christ. And Brian, as I look back, I didn't live this wild, sinful, crazy life, but I was living a form of rebellion. It would have been easy to kind of justify it because of the pain that I kind of lived in from the way I grew up, from those childhood wounds. But I was still doing life my way. I was still living out of this kind of controlling things in a way. The verse that I think best describes how I was living is Matthew 16, 24 and 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. I was doing it my own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And so in so many ways that I was living my life, I was trying to create life on my own terms. And so when I began to surrender to Christ, every aspect of my life began to radically change. God healed my anxiety and my insomnia. I had sought so many counselors trying to fix this, and it it didn't happen overnight, and it wasn't just a miraculous sudden healing. But God showed me the process to work through and how to participate in that process. And I've experienced healing of that anxiety and insomnia. What was the biggest thing that the Lord asked you to participate in that brought the greatest level of healing in that process? Yeah, that's a great question. He showed me that I I needed a special type of therapy for the healing of trauma. And that's called EMDR. And so I prayed. He led me to a wonderful, godly counselor who did that type of therapy. And the results were just miraculous. Oh, how wonderful. And God also just strengthened my marriage in an unbelievable way. I thought I had a good marriage, but because we all have hurts and wounds and things from our past. And I believe that Satan... He knows how to trigger those things. And when they're triggered or when I'm triggered, I don't respond in a very loving way. I respond in in a sinful way. Shocking. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so when my wife would do things that would might make me feel alone or might make me feel belittled or whatever, then I would respond to her in hurtful ways. And as I began to see how important it was to allow God to heal these things in my life, so that I could love her. And not only did I start responding to her without all this anger and sensitivity and defensiveness, but I began to have a lot more understanding and compassion for the ways that she was wounded as a little girl growing up and how I could be more understanding and sensitive to those things to love her. And my marriage just improved just amazingly. And the biggest measure of that is what my wife would say about it, right? Not what I would say. (laughs) Right, exactly. God restored relationships with my children. God gave me a really beautiful community. Every morning, I'm on a prayer call with guys that I need in my life to help me carry out my business. And, And it's a really simple formula. We get on the phone together. We each bring a scripture. We share what that scripture means to us. And then we pray. And then in 2018, as all this was happening, the breakthrough came with my company. And I learned about a type of investing called biblically responsible investing. When you invest in a company and you become an owner of a stock of that company, you really become a a part owner of the company. And so God was showing me that I have a responsibility as the owner of that company to understand what's being invested in and how that company is operating. And is it really God honoring or are there things that are happening with that company that are violating biblical principles? And so as I learned about that, I evaluated my own portfolio and I realized, wow, there's a lot of stuff in here that's 
companies selling pornography, using slave labor, things like that, that I got convicted of. And so I made a commitment to the Lord and I said, Lord, I'm, I'm not going to use anything in the portfolios or sell any kind of an investment that would violate your principles. And so it's actually a type of investing, biblically responsible investing that's gaining a lot of traction in the industry. I committed to that. I said, I don't know how my clients are going to feel about it. I don't know if I'm going to sink or, or swim with this approach, but I'm committing to you. And my business just started exploding. You shared this was where you're going to make a stand. Yes. The word got out and people referred people who referred people, right? Yep. The reason I'm saying this is I've heard this from multiple guests, this theme that if you do take a stand, the fear is you're going to lose everything. And you may, right? Yes. But then there's the other side of that spectrum where you take a stand and it brings in all kinds of business because people know where you stand and it's not gray. Yes. And that's what I found. And going back to that covenant that I had made was that this is the Lord's business. I'm going to honor him and I'm going to be obedient to what he shows me to do to the best of my ability. And I'm going to live with the results because he's in control of the results. And sometimes it might be hard and sometimes I might just be overwhelmingly blessed. But I really began to see this is not my company. This is the Lord's. And it's more than a business. It's a ministry. It's a way to really uh, build his kingdom and do his will. People listening to this might be thinking, wow, I'd really love to dedicate my business and make a covenant with the Lord in this fashion and yield everything. What would you say to somebody who's um, 90% there, Mark, but man, that other 10%, I don't know if I can release that. I'm a little afraid of losing everything. What would you say to someone who's maybe thinking that right now? Yeah, Brian, I would just tell them that God is so good. His love for you is so great that he can be trusted, that he knows your fears. He knows every detail of what you're going through. And I would tell him, you know, the more that I've surrendered to the Lord, the better my life has gotten. The more peace, the more joy, the more fulfillment, the more impact, the more ability to love others. Yeah, that's that has been the result. And also what's important is when hard times do come or challenges or difficulties, and I still have plenty of those, I know that God is working out something that I need, and it's for my good. That's a hard one to swallow, but when you get on the other side of stuff like that, you know it's true. Yeah, and I've got a couple of scriptures here that I want to read. So I love Romans 8.32, where it says, Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? And then in Romans 8.38 and 39, this is just reinforcing God's great love for us. It says, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons. And I love this because I can really relate from my past. Neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Man, I just want to yell. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> yeah. So my walk has really been a practicing, a learning to just continually surrender, mm -hmm. to continually surrender. And it's been a process. That's a point that I wanted to bring up is there's this kind of mindset, I think, out there that surrender is a one-time kind of a thing. And there is a lot of truth to that, but then there's this sanctification process, yeah, which requires a surrender in like minute to minute some days, right? Yes. I just want to reinforce that, that it's a continual surrender, just like he said to pick up your cross daily and follow him. The Lord says that he is perfecting us. He will perfect us to the image of Christ. But there's always something on this side of heaven. There's always something else to surrender. I think of this analogy of a farmer who's clearing his field. It's pretty easy to identify the big stones and he gets those out of the way. 
But then as he forms, there's always these smaller stones that, you know, are appearing and that are coming up that need to be done away with also. Mm-hmm. And, and I see that as is kind of how our, our life is. There's always something else that God is revealing to us to participate with him to grow in our Christ likeness. How can people find out more about you, Mark, and your business? Well, they can go to my website. The name of my business is Uncompromising Financial. And so they can go to uncompromising.financial. It's not a dot com, it's a dot financial. I'm bold for Christ on my website and they'll learn a lot about what we do and some about me personally too. Great. As we finish, I'd love to have you pray for our listeners, please. Certainly. Let me pray. Lord, just thank you for this opportunity to share what you've done in my life. Lord, I thank you that you loved me enough to just keep pursuing me and have patience with me, Lord, when I, for so many years, I wasn't getting it. And I want to pray for anybody who hears this message, who feels wounded or just so much hurt from their past or struggling with fear and anxiety. I just pray, Lord, that you would use this message to give them hope that you're pursuing them, that you love them, that that you're going to reward them for seeking after you, Lord, and that you can heal them, that you can make tremendous changes in their life, and you can grow them, Lord, to be able to surrender when it might feel like it's really hard to surrender. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and that you are true. And I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Mark, thank you so much for being on the podcast. It was so good to hear your story. Oh, thank you, Brian. Thanks for being open to my story. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. Please make sure you subscribe to the show and share this with someone you believe would be encouraged and motivated by these stories. Until next time, I'm Brian Robinson reminding you that the greatest decision you could ever make is to ask Jesus Christ to become the Lord of your life. If you haven't done that, read Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 11. Thanks again for listening. Because Mark is in the financial planning industry, I'm required to read the following disclaimer as part of this podcast. The material discussed is meant to provide general information and is not to be construed as specific investment, tax, or legal advice. Please seek such advice from your own tax and legal counsel. Securities and advisory services offered through United Planners Financial Services of America. Member FINRA, SIPA. Uncompromising Financial is not affiliated with United Partners.